Who here owns a car? Raise your hands, please. A car. There's some people who don't. Any of the people who don't own a car have ever driven a car? Been in a car? Probably, yeah. There's a pretty good chance you've either owned a car, driven in a car, etc. So that, which leads me to my next point, why testing is actually pretty important. I mean, nobody wants to drive around in a car where nobody actually bothered to look at quality. Nobody bothered to look at testing. Nobody bothered to look at if it actually crashes into something, you won't die right that instant. So testing is important. And then why does it seem to be such a very hard thing to do in our software? I mean, testing is a really important thing, and it provides you with several things as a developer. <clears throat> it's, a, it's part of the entire process of getting your software from a concept and a dream all the way into a production system. It isn't just about writing software. It, it isn't just about waiting for your compiler to finish some kind of job. It's actually about ensuring that the stuff you write actually does what it is supposed to be doing. So one of the purposes of testing is make sure that the developer gets some feedback on code quality. Do we do that on that we think that the developer needs to be told that this code isn't of sufficient quality? No. We do it because we have automated tooling. We have tools that actually can help a developer. I mean, you're busy. We all have busy lives, busy jobs, demanding day jobs. And in between, you're probably hacking on code if you're really the old school open source guy, or it's actually your day job to work entirely to do development, to work on software, etc. And it, to me, it appears to be very helpful if we have an automated system that will actually get you some feedback about the stuff you're doing. I mean, it might provide some helpful insights in potential bugs you've introduced, etc. So I think very helpful thing. It also provides you with feedback on your ideas. We, we call them test failures which is a very bad word, actually. Because it, if you do anything like test-driven development or you write proper unit tests, actually, in the unit test, you're describing what it is that you think your piece of software or your function or your little tool should do. Then isn't it very helpful to have a system that will actually tell you, hey, look, I know you wanted your function to do this, but actually, if I'm exercising it now, it, it has a different result. I expect one if I add uh, one and zero, but instead it throws me a null pointer exception. Another very helpful tool of automated testing. Now you've written your function, you've written your unit test, and they all go green. Then there might actually be the possibility that you've actually designed the piece of software you're writing to do something useful in the real world. If you go back to the example of the car, you might want it to actually drive on the road. You're not just designed a car and you've tested a car and then leave it in a parking lot somewhere. You actually wanted to take it out for a spin. Same with software. You've written it to do something useful. So that's why we have what we call integration tests. Integration tests are there to ensure that your, your module, your piece of code, or your unit, <coughs> or your function, or whatever, actually is part of a bigger whole. It's, it's part of an entire program. It's part of an orchestration platform. It's part of a car. And you actually ex expect it to do something useful in the real world. You want it to interact. You want it to, inter to be interoperable with the other parts of your application, the other parts of somebody else's application. So these three parts of testing, like code quality issues, unit testing, integration issues, is something where we, uh, being software engineers, can actually do a lot of, a lot of good work. And especially in the sense of about helping developers. A lot of people that I talk to about automated test systems always feel it's like, it, 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 it's like their mother-in-law. It, 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 it's there to nag them about stuff that they didn't do right. It's there to complain about stuff. Actually, not true. I mean, the entire idea of any kind of automated test system is to make sure that, that you as a developer can focus on the stuff that's really important to you, which is writing code and not worrying about does it properly integrate or how does it work if something changes in the infrastructure. That's what we have the automation part for. So the essential point here is that the point of testing is to get the right information 
at the right time at the right guy. And that's, what then, and that's basically the entire purpose of what we call automated testing in, in CloudStack. We need to be able, as the people who work on the testing environment, to make sure that any developer gets the feedback he needs. And the reason I've chosen a picture of a couple of pipes here is that one of those important pieces there is making sure that we pro put proper test pipelines. I mean, I've listed a number of types of tests that we can do, like the uh, code quality test, the functional test, integration tests, etc. They need to be carefully pipelined. So part of the, of, the, of the goal of any test system that we use is make sure that we provide inf uh, information fast, we provide it at the right place, and we make sure that the right developer gets that information. And this is the guy we hire to take, a, to take care of it. We have a butler. Yes, CloudStack is such a high-ranking project, we have our own butler. And actually, hopefully, most of you actually have some kind of system you're working with or some kind of CI integration uh, tooling. And I think 90% of them will probably be based on Jenkins. So Jenkins performs for us a couple of very important functions. First of all, it's a scheduler. Actually, the original design of Jenkins was to be like a replacement for cron and do some automated scheduling. But Jenkins has a really interesting view on scheduling. It's not just like perform this task at 12 o'clock in the morning, but actually it's a trigger-based system. So we can have a multitude of options saying, okay, trigger me when something changes in a code base, for example, in a Git code base or in a subversion code base. Trigger me if something changes on the file system. Trigger me based on the clock, the old school pipes. So, at really one of the steps in automated testing is actually making sure that you test it at the right moment. Well, Jenkins is gonna help us with testing at the right moment by allowing us a series of methods by, with which we can actually you know, start the build or start any kind of process at the time we select. Part of making sure we do it at the right time. <coughs> it's also very pluggable. One of the most important features of Jenkins is actually not Jenkins itself. It's actually their modular structure and the way they've structured their community. I mean, I can talk for hours about how Jenkins is doing a very good job with attracting developers and making sure they are continuously able to extend their product. But for us, the main point here is that Jenkins is a pluggable system. Pluggable means that there's literally hundreds of plugins out there that you can use to get all kinds of different features or different methods of starting builds, stopping builds, working with builds, et cetera. But that introduces a, a problem for a lot of us. Because it's so pluggable, there's so much modules out there that nobody can actually rightfully tell what Jenkins is able to do and what Jenkins isn't able to do. Which leads us to a very difficult question if we're working as, say, test engineers with a developer community, because there's so much we can do for them that it's very hard to get the right questions. I mean, if it's possible for us to trigger a build based on the fact if there's a red car in the, in the vicinity of the building, that means it's gonna be very hard for somebody to actually know, okay, yeah, I need to ask this of the test crowd about, yeah, I wanna do this. So this requires a very good dialogue with all the people that are uh, in the development community and with the testing guys. On one hand, we as testing guys need to be able to explain to everybody, this is what we can do, and on the other side, the developers working with an automated test system need to come in and say, hey, wouldn't it be great if? And in the end, we're all developers, so it's even quite possible that we find out that there's a certain thing we need that isn't there yet, and we just add another plugin to Jenkins. And another part that's very in interesting about Jenkins is the fact that it's distributed. It's not like a monolithic application that runs on a single server, and we have to plug everything into that same server. It's actually a distributed system. It uses slaves in the Jenkins term with a master server and a slave server, and every slave is its own build server and can trigger various actions, which makes it useful in, a heterog in a heterogeneous environments because we can have, for example, Windows slaves, we can have Debian slaves, we can have whatever it is we need. But again, the trigger is the same kind of problem. How do we actually get all the requirements to us about what we need to set up for a, a community or for uh, a set of developers? So, back to the Jenkins that we have for the CloudStack project. I mean, that's what we're all here for. So Jenkins is doing a couple of really important things for us. First of all, it's running our unit tests. At the moment, we have about 1,200 unit tests in CloudStack. Jenkins is exercising them 
and we'll try to give any developer the, the feedback about the unit test uh, uh, yeah, resulted in a failure or something else went wrong during the actual compile phase. And if we go back to the pipeline picture about how do we build up a pipeline to make sure that the developers get the right information at the right time, this is actually the first build you generally do. It's the bare minimum that you actually do before you commit code, and it's actually the bare minimum that Jenkins does. So this is, in general, the first step of any pipeline. Try to get the information back to the developer as fast as possible about how his build performed in a sort of clean uh, uh, build system by exercising unit tests, by compiling code, and by potentially packaging the project. The second thing that, we, that it does is our integration test suite. It is set up to run a series of Python scripts um, to exercise a real life cloud. That means that Jenkins is actually, it, it, it's building a cloud, in a cloud, in, depending on where you're running it. It exercises real functions and then verifies if those functions actually result in something that we think should be a workable uh, piece of cloud stack. So this gives us the feedback about how the system would be performing in a real life scenario. One of the problems here is that it's a very intricate and involved process. We need to spin up slaves, like we need to spin up Xen hypervisors, we need to spin up KVM hypervisors, we need to spin up VMware hypervisors, we need to configure an entire cloud. I mean, this is stuff that in some cases engineers spend a week on in a data center. He doesn't see his wife, he stays at the office, sleeps at the office, and after a week he has a working cloud. And we expect some system to be able to do it in five minutes. Not very realistic, but at least we can make it in, in a couple of hours at this moment. So it takes us like two hours to run an entire integration test suite, depending a bit about the state of the, of the system. The problem with this particular test suite is that it is a very complex test suite. And that means that there's a lot of room for failure, but not only failure by people breaking something in the code. There's actually room for failure by the system not being able to be set up. If you have to orchestrate, and we all know this because we are cloud stack developers, if you have to orchestrate KVM hypervisors, VMware hypervisors, Xen hypervisors, et cetera, and you need to write the scripts to actually constantly destroy them, build them, clean them, wrap them up again, somewhere along the line it's gonna fail. So that means that one out of every few builds is actually gonna be failing due to infrastructure issues. So the idea here is that we get feedback to the developer, like, okay, you checked in a little bit of code. We exercise the entire integration test suite, and it fails. Developer expects it to be his failure, but actually it was our failure, because we failed to make the hardware or the system so yeah, easy to use and so f foolproof that it actually did fail during the setup, which is a very irritating fact because any developer will be immediately irritated by the fact that he receives an email that something is broken in the build and he will start looking, he will start spending time on figuring out where his code failed, but instead we failed. That's a shame. It also provides a lot of reporting. <clears throat> and this reporting is not the type of reporting you would provide to your manager, but it's the type of reporting that you would actually ha find interesting as the developer yourself. So Jenkins stores all the reports like how many unit tests did we run how much did the amount of unit tests change over time? What, for example, is the code coverage of our unit tests, et cetera? We don't use them as control tools to say, okay, this is, yeah, we should have a minimum of like 80% code coverage, but they're actually really there to make sure that people have this information should they need to. It can be used, for example, to actually check, oh, this is the method I've written, this is the unit test that I've exercised it, and this is the actual code paths that were actually tested, and leaving nice, gray areas where your unit test didn't quite cover the piece of code that you actually were writing at that time. And it stores artifacts. Artifacts is not only for developers, it's actually for everybody. So if you go to the Jenkins server, you will find there, for example, the system VMs. You will find there the system templates, etc. So it's also a store or a way to get the result of our build, which is actually a fully usable cloud stack installation, right back to the guys who might want to test it. So if you want to have the latest version of CloudStack, really like the bleeding edge developer version, or you want the latest bleeding edge version of the system templates, Jenkins is actually the place to go to. Giving it a lot of functions which are yeah, basically available to the community as a service, and there's a couple of us actually making sure that we can keep on providing this service. So where is this service? This is one of them. 
Now, I don't know how many people actually work with builds.apache.org. There are some issues there in terms of latency of builds. Um, it's a pretty overloaded system at the moment. There's really a lot happening. So in general, we have just a very small number of builds running there, but most of our builds are actually running here. Jenkins built a cloud.org. Kindly donated by a number of companies who work together to actually make this a fully functional build system, where we run over 90 jobs at the moment. Those 90 jobs are split over various branches, various types of builds. For example, like I said in the previous pipeline example, the basic Maven build is running here, but we also run a slow build. So Maven build runs really fast, provides information back to the developer right within like six or seven minutes. And the slow build will actually do more checking, will run code path testing, provides you all the nice reports we, I already mentioned, but takes a lot longer, runs in like 45 minutes. And then of course, it also runs the entire integration suite, which takes another couple of hours to complete. We have only 56 plugins installed at the moment. Given an ecosystem where we have Jenkins with, uh, I think at the moment, close to 300 or even more plugins, with only 56 plugins installed, I have the impression that it's pretty much underused. There's more we can do. So one of the points where we need to get into the dialogue with other people developing CloudStack and other people integrating with test systems for CloudStack to, to get some better understanding. And there's this system. And you guys didn't fill it in properly, so I had to put a placeholder name here. <coughs> but there's actually a lot of people in the community who run their own internal build systems. And that's very good. I mean, it's easy for a developer to have a system right next to him that's pretty fast. And one of the advantages of having an internal test system is that you can actually use it to test your own kit. I mean, we're with the Apache Software Foundation, or this is hosted by our Builder Cloud or Jenkins. It's hosted by a couple of companies. <coughs> we don't have all the kit available. I mean, the purpose of CloudStack is to write a piece of orchestration software. There needs to be something that we can orchestrate. But we don't, yeah. We would like to, but we don't have all the hardware that we are compatible with. So actually, we, yeah, there's a number of companies who really want to prove that their code or their product work with their hardware, but they need to do it internally at the moment because yeah, we have no place to actually store and run all that hardware. So that means that there's a lot, lot we can do to improve the current situation. We're considering testing, we're in, we're, we're in a nice place. We have a, uh, we have a running setup, we have a, we have a pipeline entirely set up, we run actually a huge number of integration setups, but there's so much more we can do. First and foremost, it needs to be faster, and it needs to be faster every day. The, the real important thing here is if you're a developer and you're writing a piece of code, you fixed it, you ran your own tests, and you ship it off to the master branch or to any branch, basically, <coughs> and you're, yeah, you expect feedback from the test system. Or actually, you don't expect feedback from the test system because the test system won't complain if there's nothing wrong. But if the test system complains that there's something wrong, you want it in a timely fashion. I mean, you don't want to commit your code today and then have to wait for another three or four hours to actually get some feedback about did it perform well, did it have any integration issues, et cetera. So one of the things that we're constantly, constantly trying to improve is to make sure that the build system is a little bit faster. So we can get that pipeline that we discussed earlier to the developers and with better quality. Another thing that we can improve is working together. I mean, I know we're all working together, that's why we're all here at Cloudstack Collaboration Conference. But with this working together, I mean, we have multiple test systems out there. Some companies have their own kit. We have the Jenkins Buildercloud.org, we have the Apache build system. We're actually wasting resources in setting up different Jenkins systems. Why not work together, get one big Jenkins system somewhere central where it can be managed and then plug in all the companies? And in fact, it would deliver us a number of advantages. Say we run the entire BVT integration test suite. At the moment, we're limited to the basic kit. We can test most of the hypervisors, but for example, we don't have solid fire storage in the data center, we don't have if we have NSX in the data center, we don't have Midonet in the data center. So now, if they want to test it, they have Git at their own place. So one of the things we're trying to, to work on is see if we can provide a Jenkins system, since it is a distributed system, with ways to connect companies. So we would be able to set up an integrated BVT suite 
and then have certain parts offloaded to, to other parties that can actually give us access to that particular hardware. So for example, we have our Jenkins. We put a slave in the data centers of one of the companies that, were, that actively develop on CloudStack and have that particular slave run a subset of the integration tests that are particular to that kind, type of hardware that they are offering. And then Jenkins is actually perfectly capable to aggregate all the test results and give us as a community a single big overview and saying, okay, this is all the integration tests I've run. This is the end result. Again, getting the results to the developers back about how did this work. I mean, in a complex scenario where we are in with multiple storage vendors, multiple hypervisors, multiple networking technologies, there's a very real possibility that if you change something on the right side, something on the left side will break. And even though everybody is consciously and constantly testing their software, it, it still happens. And that's why we need a yeah, concentrated and uh, combined system. Another thing where we can do better is in integrating with the tooling. Now, basically, we don't start testing until one of the commits actually hits master or one of the release branches because of resource constraints, because of setup constraints. But basically, we just, yeah, somebody commits something to one of the active branches, Jenkins picks it up and starts building. There's not too many people that actually know that there's a, for example, a job in Jenkins that actually allows you to send a patch and have that patch tested against the current master version or against the current release version. And actually, it would even be better if we can have it set up in such a way that the moment you submit a review for inclusion in CloudStack, that the build system will actually be able to say, okay, you submitted a review, I'm gonna grab that patch, exercise my test suite, and then give you back the result. Making it easier for the guy who submitted the patch to see, okay, this is actually gonna be considered for inclusion. And for the guy doing the review on that patch, he has an immediate feedback like, okay, this actually builds, it passes unit tests, and it passes an integration test suite. And the same goes for inclusion with like tools like Jira and GitHub. Pull requests can be automatically tested. We don't do it yet. People submitting patches on Jira, we can automatically see those patches and test them. So there's more we can do in how we integrate. And it needs to be available globally. Of course, it's on the internet, but it's sometimes not very fast in places where we want it. It's in its distributed nature. Um, we should be doing just a little bit more to make sure that people get the right information at the right time by maybe putting some proxies or caches uh, somewhere, making the system just a little bit faster, or maybe sending out more emails or to other places. So we need to be thinking a little bit about how do we want to get the information about what the state of the build is to the people. I mean, we can expect everybody to log in in Jenkins and check it there, but there's also possibilities of saying, hey, we put like banners on websites, on the, the wiki, like, okay, the current status of the, all the builds and all the branches is correct or incorrect. So there's more we can do there. So essentially, the thing we're now aiming to do with our Jenkins system is that we want to build an integrated system. What we need for CloudStack is a system, preferably a single system running somewhere, and I really don't care why, uh, where or why, that's able to take on the enormous task of building CloudStack and exercising CloudStack. It's such a complex system, CloudStack. It's, it's an orchestration system. I mean, every day we get new patches in. Every so often we get new features in. And a new feature can be as something as like what we did with the 4.3 release, a completely new hypervisor, Hyper-V. It can be new storage types. It can be a complete overhaul of one of the backends. So in such a complex system, we need to make sure that we spend enough time on building a system that's actually capable of exercising this application. And the only way we can achieve that, if we all work together, as people interested in testing and making sure that we can get this done. And of course, there's a very important bit that I haven't talked about. We can build the best, the fastest, the fanciest, the shiniest test system anybody will ever want. I mean, we can build CloudStack, so something as simple as the test system we should be able to do as well but it's completely useless if we don't have tests. And is it the role of the test engineer to actually write the tests? No, it's the role of the individual developer. So that's where this, this is a, a, a call for action. 
if we want to make sure that we deliver the highest quality software, it's our commitment as the people working on the test systems to provide you with a system that will get you the information you need when you need it at the right time using all our fancy and shiny stuff. We can make plugins, we can make it easy for you, we can get hardware out there, we can do anything you want. But there's one factor where we really need the developers for, and that's making sure that it's actually test, that there's something we can test, some procedure that we can exercise and give that information back for you. So this is both an offer. We can offer you a lot of input and a lot of help with setting up proper testing and setting up test procedures, but it's also a cry back, please give us something to test. And with that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> so are there any questions? Go ahead. So the question is if we have any reference, if you want to get started with it, or if you want to do such a system internally. Um, that's a very good point. No, at the moment we, uh, we don't. The best reference is, of course, the, uh, the system itself. So, uh, yeah, please visit uh, um, the Jenkins.buildercloud.org. And actually, all the scripts that we use for in, within Jenkins to actually exercise the builds or execute our test procedures, they're part of the cloud stack source code. So there's the uh, test subdirectory, which contains all the smoke tests and all the integration tests. And there's the, uh, for example, the, all the packaging tests are using the packaging scripts inside cloud stack. Uh, and I, there's ample resources available on how to set up Jenkins itself. But yeah, if you need any help with that, please then join the dev mailing list and uh, make sure one of us uh, can help you out there. Any other questions? No, awesome. Oh, Just, Amy. Is it, are there certain areas where you think more tests need to be added? I mean, you want more tests in general, but are there any specific areas that you think now yeah, that's a very good question. So the question is, are there any areas where we really need more testing? So, of course, I mentioned that in general we need more testing, but there's a very interesting uh, a bit in the test uh, community is that most people tend to focus on what I call golden path testing. It's very easy to test a procedure that goes well. For example, if you want to test if a system is able to boot up a virtual machine, nine out of 10 times it will be relatively easy because the system is designed to do so. What I see as a, uh, a, a challenge in CloudStack is actually start exercising our resiliency. What happens if you try to start a virtual machine and the hypervisor isn't available in, anymore? What happens if you're migrating a virtual machine and your storage dies? That's an area where there's a lot of you know, real world pain there. I mean, stuff doesn't always work, stuff breaks. And as a CloudStack community, we shouldn't only be concerned with doing the right thing and making sure that the golden path actually works, but we should also be very concerned about what happens when certain parts of the infrastructure fail. And that is very hard to test, but an area where I think it would be really worthwhile to spend some extra effort. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you.